was looking for something deeper, something more. And that had been growing within me for quite some time. I think it's very important to ask the question, not just once, but continually, God, what do you want me to do? What is your will? And to ask that question with a real generosity of heart and openness. God doesn't play games. If we really want to know what he desires for us, what is his plan, he will tell us. Um, we have no idea what, to, what God has prepared for us. And if God is love, we, we certainly don't have, you know, much to worry about. And we certainly don't have much to doubt uh, because he's, uh, he's love and he's mercy. I think also one thing that really is important, um, that God is worth it as well as you are worth it. And that sometimes what we think happiness is in the world is really not happiness. That doesn't mean it's not good, it's very good. But, um, but there's a kind of happiness you have as a monk or as a celibate religious, where Christ is your primary motivation, your deepest friend, uh, the one who leads you into communion with the with the Holy Trinity. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Vocation is a call from God, which requires a free and responsible response from a man. If you feel called, Take the time to pray, and then take a decision. Don't be afraid. I am always with you, says Jesus. <laughs> there is a lot of grace in terms of um, trying a religious vocation and even if it doesn't work out for whatever reason um, there is a lot of experience and a lot of graces that are given over time, I found myself realizing that if God exists, and God does exist, then that really is the most important thing in the world, indeed in the universe. And to be able to spend time with people who also believe that that's the most important thing in the universe would be a wonderful thing. And if it is indeed true that God became human in Jesus Christ, then that's very important indeed and to come to know Jesus Christ better, to draw closer to him in relationship, would surely be the most important thing to do, and then to have the privilege of sharing that with other people would undoubtedly be the most important thing a person could do. And I love this way of life. Uh, it's not easy. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Um, because this life also calls us to a life of penance and sacrifice. 
We do this because God calls us to do this for those people who can't do it um, on the outside, so to speak. You know, so we, we make that ultimate sacrifice for the people of God. Okay, you want to say testing? Five, four, three, two, one. What is real virtue and strength? What is what is the real uh, virtue of, of human kind is to, to do good, <laughs> to uh, to build, not to tear down, to uh, to be there for the other, and you find your fulfillment when you are being for the others, and not what being for God and being for the neighbor, being for the spouse, being for the, the derelict, whatever it is. Seeing it from the outside is different from being inside. And I talked that over to the uh, Dominican priest who was on the retreat that weekend. He said, uh, I said, and I was going back and forth, and he said, uh, well, try it. And so I said, okay. I think overall it's the place where I should be. And it's something that if you don't know if it's the life for you, you don't know if you never try it. So that's what I learned way back in 1974 is try it. And I tried it and it became a way of life for me. When I first arrived at the monastery, one of the monks that I became acquainted with and came to admire very greatly in my life was Brother Peter. Brother Peter was, I believe, 90 years old at the time and he was this tiny five foot one Chinese man and he was the last monk from the monastery in China. And his story was the kind of story that I had been looking for for my entire life. I, I remember reading about the lives of the saints and being so starstruck by the countless men and women who endured trials and persecution for their faith and oftentimes martyrdom. Brother Peter was very, very small and very, very frail and the only indications that you could see from his former life in a communist prison was the markings of his arm from where he was handcuffed for weeks on end um, and as a result uh, losing full functionality in his right hand. Um, that was the only thing that uh, told you that, that he had suffered. But when I read his story, I discovered uh, many more trials that he endured. When the communist regime uh, took over, they kicked out the Belgian monks that had settled and established a monastery in uh, Shendu, China. But they retained the Chinese monks, including Brother Peter. And they refused to release Brother Peter unless he apostatized. But Brother Peter refused. And so for 26 years, he was imprisoned. And my favorite moments with Brother Peter was uh, when I would get to talk to him as I would uh, give him his haircuts, and I would ask him about his life in prison and ask him how he persevered for 26 years. Uh, just, the, just the thought of it was unimaginable to me. And his answer was simple. He said it's because he was a monk first. He had already inculcated a life of silence and solitude, and he had already practiced fasting. He had developed an interior castle such that when he was stripped of his monastery, Nothing that the prison, the prison warden could do would penetrate his faith. And one of the things that Brother Peter said that stuck out to me was that in his prison life, he said that he was free. Whereas Mao Zedong, the chairman of the uh, People's Republic, he said Mao was not free. And I think that 
That is one of the indications of a holy life. The ability to have a sense of profound freedom in any and every circumstance, especially the circumstances in which you are oppressed and afflicted, as opposed to the feeling of being imprisoned wherever you go. Some people wonder if the monastic life feels like a prison. Um, and I think if it did feel like a prison, then none of us would be here. Uh, no one is keeping us here. We've all decided to commit ourselves to this lifestyle out of our own free will. And if it felt like a prison, then we would leave. But the fact is that uh, as a kind of paradox, by committing ourselves to this structured lifestyle, we've found a sense of freedom that can't be had anywhere else or in any other situation. And that freedom, the, the source, the font of that freedom, comes from the ability to encounter Christ in prayer and to encounter Christ through one another in our day-to-day -day life. Ah, 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 ah,